Another top story that we are watching, the presidential debate. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump squaring off in Philadelphia Tuesday night, their first and possibly only debate ahead of Election Day. For 90 minutes, the candidates went head-to-head -head on a number of issues, including the economy. We have inflation like very few people have ever seen before, probably the worst in our nation's history. This has been a disaster for people, for the middle class, but for every class. His plan is to do what he has done before, which is to provide a tax cut for billionaires and big corporations, which will result in $5 trillion to America's deficit. Joining us now, we want to bring in E.J. Dion. He's Brookings Institution Senior Fellow in Governance Studies and Government Professor at Georgetown University. E.J., it's good to see you. So let's unpack what we heard. There's lots to get into from last night. But let's start with that soundbite that we just heard on the economy, on inflation. Obviously, just a fact check here, uh, former President Donald Trump's claims that this is the highest inflation we've ever seen certainly is not true, although we did see a big spike uh, during Biden's administration up uh, peaking around 9%, but I'm curious just first to get your reaction to last night and what your big takeaway was. Well, I think she overwhelmed him is the bottom line. And I think that's the overwhelming consensus this morning. I saw a focus group this morning where by 23 to two, the people in the focus group, these were undecided voters, uh, said that uh, Harris won. And I think there were several things that happened. First, she Put him on defense right from the beginning when she went and he was just going to walk to the lectern. Uh, she had extended her hand. He didn't want to shake her hand, but he had to and said, I'm Kamala Harris, pronouncing her name right. And that ended up setting the tone uh, for the whole night. She was on offense all night. And we had never really seen this in quite the same way in a Trump debate. Trump was in the past masterful. Uh, particularly in the Republican debates back in 2016 with his little nicknames like little Marco and the like in putting the other person on the defensive. Last night, she put him on the defensive, got him under his skin. And there were just many moments where uh, most moments actually in the debate, he veered off the message. The clip you showed was really a rare point where despite the fact that he overstated it to be gentle to him, uh, um, overstated what was happening with inflation. Um, that was one of the rare moments where he actually was on message last night. Um, he spread those false stories about immigrants eating dogs and cats. Um, he exploded at various points, um, you know, and looked snarly all night. And she looked extraordinarily calm. Um, it's just hard uh, to see that debate as anything else but uh, an overwhelming victory for her. And again, I don't think. Um, I don't think that's an odd view, I, I, a dissenting view. I think it's the overwhelming view this morning among Republicans and Democrats who watch that debate. EJ, e e sorry, we have a couple more sound bites too here. Uh, another topic talked about last night was the semiconductor industry, Harris calling out Trump for chip policies during his administration. I want to play this clip and get your reaction on the other side. He invited trade wars. You want to talk about his deal with China. What he ended up doing is under Donald Trump's presidency, he ended up selling American chips to China to help them improve and modernize their military. We hardly make chips anymore because of uh, philosophies like they have and policies like they have. I don't say her because she has no policy. Everything that she believed three years ago and four years ago is out the window. Now, it's going to be an amazingly important topic, of course, EJ, especially given where the industry is moving. You have NVIDIA talking about one million chip data centers. We heard from Oracle and saying that they were going to be using nuclear reactors to power data centers, all these things considered. Where did the candidates line up on this issue from your perspective? Well, you know, it's funny. You, you have picked out, to your credit, uh, relatively substantive uh, moments uh, in, a, in a long debate. I think that what you're, the, the difference is, I think, to, uh, to the extent that you could discern it from that debate, which I'm not sure you can, um, you know, the, um, the Biden uh, administration and the Harris, with Harris's support, um, is uh, has invested a lot of money in domestic technology, uh, including uh, the chips industry. I think if um, you know if Harris wins the election, I think you will have a continuation of where the broadly speaking where the Biden policy is on this. 
On Trump, it's hard to say from his answer, because again, I think that clip was revealing in the sense that what Trump was moved again on the defense, uh, and then he tried to flip it to a general attack on Harris. And I think that was his problem all night, is that um, he'd reach, he, he'd get in a corner, and then he'd reach back to some boilerplate attack to try to get out of it, and it just didn't work very well. EJ, I also want to ask about something that wasn't actually discussed last night, and that was deficit budgets. I think it was only mentioned once. And I bring that up because of the real issue and, and ultimately maybe the risk or challenge that this clearly does pose, many would argue it poses, to the economy down the line. Why, from your view, since you've been covering this obviously for, for, for decades, for such a long time, why isn't it? more of an issue, more of a focus in presidential elections? And should it garner more attention? Well, I think there are, I think that for one thing, we got used to higher deficits during the pandemic and that we needed to pull ourselves out of the economic uh, you know, collapse that happened well, with the pandemic, um, spent a lot of money, both parties voted for that. Um, and the other thing I think you've seen is that for a long time, um, Republicans have made the argument that, well, if it's for tax cuts, if, if we are increasing the deficit for tax cuts, that's OK. Um, and the difference between the parties is now uh, which party will increase the deficit less. The economists who do the numbers say that, you know, the Harris side is willing to increase taxes to contain uh, the increase in the deficit. But I don't think at this point people feel the threat of the long-term deficit because, you know, the big news, you talk about a, a campaign getting good news. The Harris campaign got a Taylor Swift's endorsement last night and then gets this very good news um, on the inflation rate uh, this morning. Um, so at this point, I don't think people have felt the bite yet of the deficit and neither party sees any interest in making that the a centerpiece of their campaign. Yes, sounds very right. EJ Dion, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much for joining us here. Brooks Institution Senior Fellow in Governance Studies and Government Professor at Georgetown University. Thanks again. Great to be with you. Thank you.